Hi everyone, I'm Evo PP, probably the best Indian nuzz locker in the world. In this video, I will be going over my attempts at doing a hardcore nuzz lock of Pokemon Fire Red using poison types only. This is the second run in my series of trying to defeat Pokemon Fire Red by doing a hardcore mono lock with each type. I did a flying types only run before this and that video is up on the channel already, so do check it out. As you may know, the poison type is one of the worst types in Pokemon. However, for generation 1, it genuinely has a great pool of Pokemon that are all viable to be used for a Nuzlocke. Yes, even Beedrill. Once you include Crobat in this list, it makes it an even easier challenge. So I thought I'd get it out of the way early on. As a reminder, in a Nuzlocke, if a Pokemon faints, it ceases to exist. Additionally, my rules for a hardcore Nuzlocke are on screen now. I also request you to please hit the like and subscribe buttons as they immensely help out and only take up to 5 seconds of your time. Let's get on to attempt 1. For my starter, I pick Bulbasaur and name him Poetic Ass, based on my friend's username who was in chat as I was streaming. Bulbasaur is a phenomenal Pokemon for Fire Red and the best starter for a hardcore Nuzlocke because he trivializes the early game. My next encounter is a Weedle named Ash who quickly evolves into Beedrill, but he won't have a role to play until much later in the run. The first gym battle against Brock is a cakewalk as we click on Wine Whip twice to win. I accidentally clicked on Tackle first, but as you can see, it changed nothing. At this point though, my game glitched. I had hacked in the national text because I wasn't aware of PK Hex at this point and it caused issues while saving the game. So I had to fix that, but in Mentry doing the entire run until this point, which was obviously easy, and I decided to call it Attempt 2. I did forget to name Beedrill this time, but fix that later on. I catch a Nidoran male named Giovanni, who evolves into Nidorino soon. I also catch a Zubat named Brock and use a Moonstone found in Mount Moon to evolve Nidorino into Nidoking, which is way too strong for this point in the game. I also catch an Ekans named Jesse before Cerulean City. The rival fight is easy here, so we jump straight to Misty, but Ivysaur makes this simple too with Sleep Powder, Lead Seed and Wine Whip. He did come close to fainting as Tami went down, but that was only because of a critical hit swift. I now catch an Oddish named Erika who evolves into Gloom. Nidoking makes quick work of the rival once again and sweeps through Surge with no trouble at all. Zubat evolves into Golbat and Ekans evolves into Arbok. The run has been an absolute breeze until this point and I think I could win a Deathless. There's an item there if I'm not wrong. Yeah. I could have easily played around that with Golbat, but was so focused on getting through quickly that I made a misplay. It's not the biggest loss though, since I can get Nidoqueen later. For the rival fight in Pokemon Tower, the Kadabra is the only real issue, but Golbat gets a lucky flinch with Bite. I was quite overleveled, so unless he crit, Golbat was fine there. Erika evolves into Wild Bloom, and it's now time to face her namesake, who is an easy sweep with Golbat. All four gym leaders until this point have been beaten with one Pokemon, with only Misty putting up anything resembling a fight. Poison Pokemon are amazing in this game. Ivysaur evolves to Venusaur and can help sweep through Giovanni. Ghastly is my next encounter, and I name him Sir Gastus after a suggestion from Mr. Sheep on Twitch, and he quickly evolves into Haunter and then Gengar. Koga time, and I use both Gengar with Psychic and Venusaur with Leech Seed and Sleep Out. I used both of them on each of Koga's Pokemon to ensure that Gengar didn't overlevel past the level cap. I then catch a Venomoth in the Safari Zone called Sabrina and catch another Nidoran male to trade him and obtain a female Nidoran named Miss Nido who evolves into Nidorina and then Nido Queen. I catch a Tentacle named Misty, another amazing encounter, and evolve him into Tentacruel. His first battle is with my rival and he gets a lucky freeze using Ice Beam on the Pidgeot, who is then taken out by Crobat who evolved at some point after defeating Erika. Execute is taken up with Fly and Wing Attack as he keeps missing Sleep Powder, and the Alakazam is one shot with Shadow Ball. Venusaur can help take out Gyarados, and Tentacruel can come back in and defeat the Charizard. Giovanni time again, and Tentacruel can use two serves to take out the Nidorino. Crobat takes over half its health while also bringing Kangaskhan down to little over 50%. Venusaur can use Lead Seed and Razor Leaf to take him out. Nidoqueen doesn't have ground moves, so a couple of serves from Tentacruel can take her out. On rewatching this, I was risking Tentacruel to a body slam crit, but oh well. Next up is a Sabrina fight, which is theoretically the most difficult battle of this run. She has three fast psychic types that can set up with Calm Mind. One misstep here, and the run is over. So I definitely need my best Pokemon for this fight, right? Wrong. I lead with Beedrill, who is brought as close to the level cap as possible. Click on Twin Needle twice to take out the Kadabra and Mr. Mine, 
and with the speed increase from leveling up, he now outspeeds Sabrina's ace Alakazam and can one-shot her with Queen Needle 2. Venomoth is one-shot with Aerial Ace. That's the power of attack and speed EVs and a fearless speedrun who wasn't afraid to dream. At the Pokemon Mansion, I get my last two encounters, a coughing named James and a Grimer which is caught with the Master Ball, named Ash as well. I evolve Grimer into Muck and am ready for the fiery 7th gym leader, Blaine. He isn't though, as I click on Surf 4 times with Tentacruel for the win. I click on it 5 more times to defeat the final gym leader, Giovanni. The final rival fight before the Elite 4 is up next and I lead with Tentacruel again, who can one-shot the Pidgeot with Ice Beam. For Alakazam, I decide to play it safe and use Venomoth to get off a leech life before sacrificing herself. A Twin Needle from Beedrill takes out the Alakazam. Rhyhorn is taken out with a Surf from Nidoqueen while Muck can help him take out Gyarados and deal some damage on Charizard before Tentacruel can finish him off. A final Twin Needle from Beedrill ends his contribution for the run as Execute goes down and I'm ready for the Elite Four. Here's my team and it's frankly stacked. Sergastus the Gengar, Ash the Muck, Misty the Tentacruel, Miss Nido the Nidoqueen, Poetic Ass the Venusaur and Brock the Crobat. Can they help me defeat the Elite Four and become champion myself? I think we all know the answer to that. First up is Lorelei, with a decently strong team, but her two psychic types don't have psychic type damaging moves, so she should be easy. Gengar's Thunderbolt just misses out on the kill as her lead dugong sets up the hail. She uses a full restore, but a second Thunderbolt high rolls and gets the knockout. Slowbro is also knocked out with one Thunderbolt. Lapras takes the Thunderbolt fairly well, but a Surf can't even kill with a crit, so a second takes her out. Her remaining Cloyster and Jinx are also one-shot with Thunderbolt and Shadow Ball respectively as Gengar is swept through the first Elite Four member with ease. Bruno is next and I lead with Venusaur who one-shots his Onyx with Razor Leaf. For Hitmonchan, the tried and tested combo of Leech Seed, Sleep Powder and Razor Leaf is enough. Crobat can use a single Wing Attack to knock out the Hitmon Lee and fly in Wing Attack to get rid of Machamp, who only got off a scary face in return. His final Onyx is one-shot with Venusaur. Agatha is up next with her poison types only team, but mine is superior. Crobat can take her lead Gengar out as she uses a full restore. Crobat also one shots the Haunter and uses two Shadow Balls for her second Gengar as she just misses a Hypnosis. Nidoqueen can defeat her inferior bat with Ice Beams after taking some damage from Air Cutter. Last up is Arbok, who is one shot with a critical hit Earthquake. Lance is last of the Elite Four and could be problematic, but I have a plan. Venusaur leads to slowly whittle down the Gyarados with Leech Seed and Sleep Powder. As he snoozes, Tentacruel comes in and after a few turns, Gyarados falls with Tentacruel having a substitute up. He can then one-shot Lance's remaining Dragons and Rock World with 3 Ice Beams and 1 Surf respectively. The champion fight is last and as I have 6 Pokemon alive and healthy, I'm ready to lose one to his Alakazam if it means a safer route to victory. Nidoqueen leads against his Pidgeot and takes him out with a few Ice Beams, taking only a single Aerial Ace in return due to a lucky freeze. Alakazam comes in and it's time for Miss Nido to say goodbye. Alakazam goes for Reflect first as Nidoqueen uses Earthquake. He then uses Psychic which does a lot of damage but surprisingly doesn't get the knockout as I fire off a strong bite. Alakazam then uses Future Sight instead of Psychic and goes down to a final bite. I didn't expect that but still, Nidoqueen has to stay in and hopefully live long enough to take the future side. Rhydon comes in and is one shot with Surf. Next is Executor and Nidoqueen uses her final attack, an Ice Beam, which actually manages to get the freeze before future side hits and she survives on 3 HP? I have never seen a Pokemon want to live so much. It feels like her male counterpart, Giovanni, was cheering for her from the crate beyond. If you're wondering how she survived, Future Sight is only 80 base power in this gen and also typeless, so it probably low rolled. I switch in Crobat to take out the Executor. Venusaur can deal with the Gyarados as it almost always has this run, but the rival switches in Charizard on a Sleep Powder, who can be taken out with two serves. Last is Gyarados, so I substitute to scout what he's using and it's Thrash, so I switch to Gengar for one final Thunderbolt, which takes out Gyarados, winning me the battle and the run. To quote myself from the Flying Types Only run, well, that was easy, to no one's surprise. The great variety of Pokemon I had, along with the respective compatibilities with so many TMs and HMs, meant that the run was a breeze with EV training. As I mentioned in the Flying Types Only run, going forward I will only be using EVs when necessary, and I did practice this for my Water Types Only run, which was much more difficult than the Flying and Poison runs have been. 
My next video will be my Pokemon Renegade Platinum Hardcore Nuzlocke and that should be a long one. If you've stuck around to this point, please leave a like and a subscribe as that would greatly help me out. If you disagreed with any plays or have any suggestions, let me know in the comments as I always read them and respond. Thanks for watching. See ya.